Hi, I'm Symphoniers, and today we're taking a look at this goofy infinite mana combo list that beat me in Mythic, uh, more on that at the end of the deck tech, and I thought it would be a fun deck to do a video on. So the basic idea of the deck is that you have these things that let you combine activated abilities from multiple creatures uh, in Agatha's Soul Cauldron and Patchwork Crawler. Ideally, we're hoping to get Sleep Cursed Fairy's ability uh, to untap itself, or less preferably a Depth Charge Colossus's ability. Um, on to something that can also tap for mana, like Kami of Whispered Hopes or Deathbloom Ritualist. Uh, so either of these, once you have the ability to untap them, if they are tapping for more than one mana, which they usually will with the rest of the deck working the way it does, um, you can generate infinite mana. Uh, like if it tap, if the Kami is tapping for three, untap it for two, you are net positive on mana and you can use the rest of that mana to win the game or whatever. The rest of the cards in the deck help kind of s facilitate actually killing your opponent. Um, Battlefield Butcher is the primary win con of the list in that it's the thing that we are sinking infinite mana into to drain the opponent to death once we can do that whole goofy thing. Tyvar is a great setup piece for the list in that uh, Mill gets stuff into the graveyard. Uh, to help ensure that we have things we can eat with Agatha's Soul, Cauldron, and or the Patchwork Crawler, um, and then we can get something back onto the battlefield. So even if, like, combo pieces have been killed or, like, we just need a creature on the battlefield, we can get something back, and the kind of passive ability of activating things as though they had haste, not wildly relevant, although it does come into play with, like, if you are relying on a Kami of Whispered Hopes or something, just a good kind of setup facilitating card for the deck. Lodgy Archaeologist mills cards into the, into the graveyard again to set up all the like patchwork and Agatha's uh, stuff. And we can get, like, if we don't have an Agatha Soul Cauldron in hand, we can get that into hand. If we don't have a Tyvar, we can get that into hand. Bare minimum, uh, Falaji is a great kind of stonewall for uh, mono red or whatever. It's one of the ways we have to buy time with the list. Training Grounds helps make the entire combo process more efficient instead of having to like have Kami or whatever uh, tapping for three, four, five mana. Um, you can just you trim down the activation costs of Sleep Cursed Fairy or the Depth Charge Colossus thing, and all of a sudden, if it's just tapping for two or whatever, you can go and generate infinite mana. So, yeah, Training Grounds just helps uh, make things more efficient. Most notably, or like most importantly, it makes Hypnotic Grifter more efficient. Uh, Hypnotic Grifter is a great card in this deck for a lot of reasons. Um, one, conniving for one mana with the training grounds down is just deeply efficient and a great way to pitch the cards that you don't actually want to cast, namely Deathbloom Ritualist and Depth Charge Colossus. Uh, you can get those into the bin just really cleanly, really efficiently, and the conniving can also help you search for combo pieces that you are currently missing. Additionally, if you have a grifter under the Soul Cauldron or under the Crawler or whatever, the grifter actually makes the uh, me more efficient, like if <laughs> If something has the Kami ability uh, and you're growing it with the Grifter ability, it will tap for more and more mana, so you can make the infinite mana combo increasingly like smooth and efficient, which is just helpful for like actually playing the whole thing. Uh, and then you can also filter like uh, creatures into the graveyard for the purposes of Deathbloom Ritualist's effect, which is uh, again kind of makes the entire combo smoother. So yeah, uh, it just, it, it's really a great piece of glue for holding the list together. Um, I think I more or less covered the combo, so yeah, uh, nothing wild in the mana base, just a whole lot of duels to uh, make things work. So I mentioned that someone beat me with this. This was a combo I was interested in playing in spoilers, like I realized this was a thing you could do, but I didn't have a great kind of plan for it. Uh, and then, uh, number 120, or 192 Mythic killed me with it, uh, and I was just like, oh yeah, Training Grounds, the Grifter, everything kind of clicked into place, and this is my attempt to replicate what they were doing. The only cards here that weren't in their deck were the Deathbloom Ritualist and Depth Charge Colossus, um, and those are just to kind of fill space and give a little bit of combo redundancy. I have not tested this list extensively at Mythic or anything. I will, I'm not going to make any great claims to, um, it being a good ranked deck. Uh, you know, read into what you will of, like, 
this person playing it in numbers. Um, but uh, just from basic play queue testing, I did 6-0 play queue games with it. So uh, if you just, just want like a good casual combo list, maybe this fits the bill. Also, this video might be shorter just because I'm a little pressed for time today, running late and all that stuff. So yeah, uh, I've rambled about like the kind of raw mechanics of the combo long enough. Let's get on to some actual gameplay. I'm just going to surrender here and to explain why we have two cards in hand that we never actually want to cast, uh, and we are playing into Bant Control with, and they uh, cast a temporary lockdown that just absolutely ruined everything. So, for the sake of saving time, bye opponent. <laughs> okay, I like this hand a lot. We've got a Grifter, we've got a Cauldron, we've got Tyvar. Little land heavy, that part is less than ideal, but aside from that, uh, totally, totally fine. I probably should have just done the island there, don't mind me, I thought this was the other thing, I don't play with the Dimir duels much. Um, yeah, we will just get the Soul Cauldron down. Uh, doesn't have anything to eat at the moment. Chip in with the Grifter. We don't have a lot of reason to attack, or like, yeah, don't have a lot of reason to attack, um, but they're not playing, uh, if they were on white they might have like the Elspeth's uh, smite spell thing that I would be more concerned about. Um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Mill 3, we do the Tyvar thing, a bunch of crawlers in the graveyard. Uh, we would like to keep one of the grifters, or keep that grifter in the graveyard, and stick it under the soul cauldron, I think. Um, just cause that's going to give us some kind of redundancy or backup in case they happen to remove this grifter. Um, I wouldn't mind conniving away the Sleep Cursed Fairy. Hmm. Do we chump block for Tyvar? Maybe? It's less that we need to. We don't actually need Tyvar to stick around. Okay, we're drawing an awful lot of land. Um, we don't actually really need Tyvar to stick around uh, beyond the initial activation. Hmm. Um, however... Uh, can just be handy, or like we can accrue additional value sometimes. Show them what you're made of. Uh, oh, we're flooding so hard. I was so optimistic about this game, and then, then we had to go and draw a bunch more lands. Um, we don't block with the Grifter here. Because we need creatures on the battlefield. Elena and Elena, sure. Another storm charged slasher, okay. Great. Oh, they don't attack Tyvar. We just take eight, okay. In this case, um, or like given that, we will zero out Tyvar. What a grand fight! I don't believe it. Getting to mill twice. Oh, um. One of those is a Kami of... Ooh, good Kami. Uh, get the Crawler back, it doesn't super matter. Um, I don't think. So, uh, Death Cap Glade. We will exile the Kami. Um, put a counter on the Crawler just because we already have counters on the Grifter. And we will, uh, tap. Um, tap for three blue. Untap. Um, also we should probably training grounds at this point just to, uh, we can connive to make things more efficient, um, but we don't have any non-land cards in hand. Um, okay. Uh, tap for blue. I do want to actually cast the Vlogi Archaeologist, I think. So, let's do this. Mm, training grounds, okay. Um, we already have a training grounds down, and that's doing a lot of work, so we are just going to 
uh, do some taps on taps and do a connive. Another sleep cursed fairy. Um, connive. We're increasing the efficiency of our infinite. Um, connive. I am fishing for the butcher here. Um, Because we can get that under the patchwork crawler. Good. For a second I was worried that we didn't have a kill. Because <laughs> you do need to actually have the ability to stick the drainer under. Um, like, get get that ability. Get access to that ability. Uh, our opponents being a deer and letting me play this out. Uh, okay. By depth charge Colossus. Um, nice thing is that once you have a bunch of mana. Or like this is why I kind of focused on getting the grifter mana up and getting this a little bit smoother, is we can just chain knives because we have six uh, six blue floating and uh, speed things up a little bit. Uh, do 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 do. We are just legitimately fishing for... Um, I know we can tap for green um, Untap, or sorry, tap for black is what I did there. Tap for green, uh, untap, do the Tyvar. And this will maybe be a little bit faster than conniving several times. Have <laughs> Not necessarily, but you know. You? Uh, Flodgy Archaeologist can mill and get things in the graveyard. We have the Butcher in the graveyard. Excel target creature from a graveyard and put a counter on uh, the patchwork crawler. Get that butcher under there. Uh, now we can activate that battlefield butcher and untap because Agatha Soul Cauldron has a fairy under it. So we can do this thing. Can you tell I'm excited that we are getting to actually do the combo uh, in the video? Yeah. Uh, one nice thing about this combo, or one thing that makes it a little bit more consistent than similarly complex combos, is that you don't have to actually have, like, all of the abilities on one thing. And this is a great example of that, because the Grifter does not have access to the Butcher ability. Um, Soul Cauldron, or the Cauldron was, uh, ooh. They realize we have the infinite now, I think. Or, like, yeah, we have a giant pile of mana floating. Um, the Butcher's ability is cheap, so I don't... Are we even using mana for this? We're using mana for the untap, anyway. We we have the infinite. Good games to the opponent? I, I'm... I'm unsure if they have anything in hand. Um, but we certainly have the kill here. Yes, there they go. Uh, wonderful! We got to do the thing! Woo! I might honestly just end the recording there, because I think that was a wonderful game uh, in terms of demonstrating a lot of aspects of the combo, of like how you fish for combo pieces and to set things up. And also, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm running a little tight on time a little late today, uh, so yeah. A uh, big thank you to that opponent for actually letting me get through most of the combo. Uh, if you like the video and like the deck tech and all that, thank you so much for watching. Um, hope you enjoy it, like, subscribe, etc. Always helps the channel a lot. And yeah, hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Thank you for watching the video, and an extra big thank you to the Patreon patrons and YouTube members that help make these videos possible. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye. <laughs>